Okay, Let's go to the word. Quick, quick question. The things I just told you, do they frighten you or eh? do you want to be informed? Eh? Huh? Okay. It's good. Oh, praise God. I thought I had frightened some of you because of those details I just gave. The church of Pegamos. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the church in Pegamos had servants of God who were willing to serve, even ready to die. Such as Antipas. Antipas was martyred, but they didn't know the cunning skills of the enemy. They didn't know secrets and mysteries. So it is very crucial that when you know God, you also understand his enemy and how he operates. Because there are some people when you start telling them the mysteries of the operations of Satan, they don't want to know because they want to be in the love of God. But Satan will come for you even if you are in the love of God. It is good to know the love of God. But it is also necessary to know how the enemy of God works. Allow me to welcome you in the month of September. This is this is a month of a good reputation. Niko muburyo bwa gihanuzi twa twisuka kwezi. Prophetically this is how we have named the month of September. Imana iguhizi naryiza. May God give you a good reputation. Imana iguhe kuvugwa neza. May God give you a good reputation. Aho cha hose humuri mpumuro y'ibyiza. Wherever you pass may you be the fragrance of good things. Amen. Amen. The title of today's sermon is Clothed with a Good Reputation by Dwelling Among Godly People. We are reading in the book of Joshua. 622 to 25. Yoshua gatanda to makumyabiri na kabiri kweza kuri makumyabiri na gatanda. We're going to Joshua chapter 6 verse 22 to 25. Ngoma ze Yoshua bugira baba gabo babiri. Bata tagigi hugati. Ni mwinjire munzu ya maraya uo. Musoro u mugore. Nizwa fitebzo se. Nkuko mga murahi. But Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and from there bring out the woman and all that she has as you swore to her. Nuko abo basore babiri batase barinjira basora rahabu nase na nyina na bene se nibyo yarafite byose numuryango wabo wose babishyira inyuma y'urugerero rwa Bisiraheli. And the young men who had being spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Then Joshua 
aba mu Bisraeli na bugingo nubu kuko yahishe za ntumwa Yosuwa yatumaga gutata iyeriko and Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Amen. 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 Inkuru Yerhabu Turayizi. We are very familiar with the story of Rahab. Rahabu Murawizi Koyabu Yerumu Nunghatwe. We know that Rahab was like all of us. Because of the difficult life she was living, she had to make some choices to do with her lifestyle. People make different choices when it comes to the lifestyle they choose to live. When people are looking for ways to survive. Rahab had decided to be a prostitute. It is possible that she was coming from a very poor family and they lived in Jericho, a very powerful city. In the times of Joshua, Jericho was very powerful. God could have allowed Israel to go through other cities before coming to Jericho because Jericho was powerful, it was guarded. But God allowing Israel to first attack Jericho, it was for their empowerment. If Jericho could fall, any other city could fall. It is also evident that Jericho was built on the pillars of darkness. Because those countries in the ancient times practiced heavy witchcraft and sorcery because when you read the scriptures, the Bible says that their abominations were at a very high level. That's why when God sent Israel to the promised land, he said the abominations of that land have come to the fullness of the brim. The strategy they used to fight Jericho was different from all the other strategies they used with other cities. Because the strategy the strategy they used in Jericho didn't involve arrows, spears, soldiers fighting. It was spiritual warfare. They moved and performed prophetic acts. They sang. They prayed. Which implies that Jericho was built on the power of demonic power. Joshua, before they attacked Jericho, sent spies. Joshua sent spies and the act of sending spies is a military strategy when an army is going to attack another land they'll have to spy they have to get data they have to get information that was the ordinary military action he could have done. Joshua, in his mind, thought they were going to fight the army of Jericho. But again, Joshua had become accustomed to the combination of spiritual warfare and military warfare. If you remember very well, when they fought the Amalekites, he was fighting the Amalekites with his weapons and Moses was fighting spiritually, raising his hands. 
which means hari intambara zimwe turwana ukageragereshe umubiri ariko ndizikunde bisaba ko ujya mu mwuka naho kuko hari bimwe bisaba kombinezo ya byombi hari nini intambara urwanira mu mwuka gusa ariko na isaba strategy y'umubiri ugomba kumenya rero niba iyi ntambara ari ya byombi cyangwa ari yiki kimwe cyangwa ikindi what does this tell us this tells us that this tells us that there are some battles we fight spiritually and there are some battles that are combined with physical fighting or physical strategies and there are some physical battles that we fight but with an aspect of spirituality you need to have the wisdom to discern which tactic to employ Donc abana basore babiri baragenda binjira iyeriko ariko ngo iyeriko hari yakinze cyane barasana bari bafite couvre feu kuko bari baramenye igihe bari baramenye ko abisereye bagiye kuza mu buryo ngo gukingura no kwinjira iyeriko byari bigoye ngo hari hadadi yakinze cyane these two young men were sent out as spies and when they went they found that Jericho was heavily guarded it seems like they had a curfew and they had heard the news of the Israelites so they must have enforced their protection Ikindi yeriko yari fite nabo abantu bamenya makuru baneka abinjiye nabasoka Jericho also had spies people who knew those who entered and those who left Jericho. So when these two young men came through the gates of Jericho, those in charge of security noticed. Maybe they noted that they were different, they dressed differently, they looked differently from the others. Umenye neza kwa abantu bari bagize imyaka myinshi mu butayo n'imyambaro yabo nuko bameze ntabwo bakwinjira mu mudugudu ukinze abantu bareke kubibazaho Remember that these young men had spent so many years in the wilderness so if they show up you will definitely see that they look different from everyone else and you ask yourself who are these people Ariko nabo mu buryo bw'ubwenge but also being wise, they came looking for a prostitute. Oh, but Mariah. And they showed them the prostitute, her house. They were not going to meet the prostitute for that specific reason. But they wanted to confuse the, the, the other people in that place. But those in charge of security kept asking, who are those two people? Then they closed the city. When they entered Rahab's house, she, she was their first prophetess. She told them, she told them, these two young spies, that this whole land is living in fear because of you and your people. We came to know that your God led you to cross the Red Sea. This is a prostitute telling the spies. Because a prostitute will gather information from people. Prostitutes will know the latest trends, they'll know the latest gospel songs, the latest secular songs because they come across many people from different backgrounds. So they have a lot of information. There are people who are more informed than everyone else. You know? It's the people who cook for us at home. Our watchmen at home. When you want to marry someone in a neighborhood, go and ask from the house boys and the house girls. They will tell you the right bride. If you meet a young woman and tell her, let's meet in town and let's go to a restaurant and have a meal, she'll come looking all collected and nice. You will not get to know details about her personal life. But if you're really looking for a wife, you should ask the people who live with her because they know if she's <laughs> as clean, if she's as collected as you see her in public. Our watchmen at home know the hours we return home. 
They will open the gate and you will drive in the gate and they will observe. They will know the time you have come home and they have seen what's in the car. Kandi bagiri sam ngo patroyaje sakenda nta saha fite ariko azi sakenda ko ricyo gye patroya ta. They will know that the boss came at 3 a.m. in the morning even if they're not wearing a watch. Anyway, barahabu rero nuko nabo bari bamese. So this is Rahab, a prostitute. Ababwira makuru yose. She gives them all the information about Jericho. And she tells them another thing we Amahanga yose yagerageje kubitanga imbere. Imana yanyu yarayatsinze. All the nations that rose against you, your God fought for you and destroyed them. She tells the spies, We know that God has given you Jericho. There were no signs. Jericho was shut. Jericho had soldiers who were prepared for a long time. But Rahab the prostitute started prophesying while she was still a, a prostitute. She started being used by God while weak. God can use anyone at any given time. Because of the love of God. Because of what God wants. Because of what God is up to. Let me tell you. God can use a donkey to warn a prophet. God can use a goat. God can use a baby. Because of the love that God has for us. To keep us and protect us. God can use anyone at any given time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Rahab tells them Let me ask Please I know that Jericho will be taken But save my life And my family And my relatives and they said that's okay you've taken good care of us we will save your lives and she tells them I know our people are very observant they, we know that they know so much we have many people who have mental illness issues. So let's bear with them as they try to help him. Amen. 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 Let's, let's not get distracted. Let's focus on the word. <laughs> So Rahab tells them, please hide me. Let me hide them from the enemy. Spare my life, my parents' lives, and my siblings' lives. Because we know the Lord has given you the nation. This is what happened. After a short while, Rahab told them, that I will hide you at the top of the rooftop. She took them at the rooftop and she hid them. She took some mats and covered them. She, she hid them. Then the people who worked for the security organs knocked on her door. They knocked on her door. They didn't ask for much. They told her, bring the two men who just entered your house. Because they had followed their steps. You have taken in two men. And she said, yes, I took in two men. I took in two men. They came to my house. But right now, they just left. Run and take this side. This side of the road, you take them and meet them on the other side. They just left. Take over. Run after them. Do not delay. 
They said, what? <laughs> they all ran. <laughs> when they ran, Rahab told them, what convinces me that you will save me? I just saved your lives. How sure can I be that you will save me when you come to jail? Swear to me. But they knew the power behind the oath or swearing. They swore to her. We will protect you. And your family, family yawe your whole family, nothing will happen to you. Nothing will happen to your household. You said, is that true? But, will you remember my house? Her house was near a pillar. She lived at the top floor. She told them, listen, when you go through the gate, they will see you. These young men were commandos. They knew how to fight. So she tied a rope. And they all climbed down from her house. They agreed. They told her, get a scarlet thread and put it on this side of the pillar of the wall. We will tell all our people whoever will see this scarlet thread they'll know it is Rahab's house. Even though we have sworn to you there are things we will not be able to do. You will have to do this. The day we will attack Jericho your mother and father should be in this house. Let all your siblings be in this house. Even your friends. Let them be in this house. This is the only place we will spare. But if your parents are in another house, we will kill them. What does this mean? When you're related to people, parents, siblings, but they are not in the covenant with Jesus, you will never see them again after this life. As much as you love them, when they live beyond the scarlet thread, they will not be spared. But if your relatives are in Jesus, if they are in Noah's ark, if they are in Rahab's house, their lives will be spared. The two spies said their blood will not be on our hands if they will not be in your house when we attack Jericho. She said, only that. I will bring everyone to my house. I think Rehab brought them before time. I think that's when her business shut down because her house was When Jesus comes to your house, there are other people who leave. Some businesses will shut down. I think her business shut down after the scarlet thread was hung. She couldn't bring clients when her whole family was staying with her. So her business definitely shut down. Praise God because when Jesus came to our hearts, there are some clients that we had to let go. Amen. Amen. The scarlet thread is a sign of the blood of Jesus. It's a sign of the presence of the cross in our lives. Joshua. So Joshua, the two spies, Rahab tells them, I have confused <laughs> I have confused the people who are pursuing you. You should go by this way. 
She lets them down. Baragenda. And they ran. The people looked for the spies and couldn't find Yeshua them. Raza. Joshua came Mumpa Makuru. and asked them for the information they had collected. They repeated the whole story for Joshua. Okay. And he said, all right. Uomugore. This woman, Muzamibuka. will you remember the hollow? They said, yes, we left a scarlet thread by her window. Sawa. He said, okay. Early in the morning, Joshua woke up, went to move around Jericho to see. Joshua was alone. When he was about to get close to Jericho, he saw a general with stars and a sword on the way. Joshua prepared to fight him. And Joshua asked him, Who are you? Are you for us or are you against us? And the man looked at Joshua and said, Joshua, I have come to deliver the armies of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to deliver the armies of the Lord. Joshua knelt down and worshipped him. What does this mean? This is a spiritual warfare, Joshua. He knelt and worshipped him and he gave him the green light. That's how they started moving around Jericho. The people in Jericho saw young men moving around the walls of Jericho. Very tired, very hungry. It's like surrounding the whole of Kigali. They would move around. Very hungry, very tired. And then go, go back to the camp. And then come back. And the people in Jericho were like, what's wrong with these people? But spiritual warfare had begun. On the last day, they surrounded Jericho seven times. And then they blew the trumpets. After blowing the trumpets, they all screamed out. When they screamed out, all the walls of Jericho fell. They didn't do anything. That was spiritual one. May all the walls that have been surrounding your life fall down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Joshua ran and called the two spies. Where is Rahab the harlot? They said, We know. Only Rahab's house did not fall. The pillar of the house of Rahab and the scarlet thread. Ten thousand will fall. A thousand will fall. And you will remain standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross the blood of Jesus will enable you to stand in difficulties. The spies came in. Imagine hugging Rahab. Rahab hugged them and said, this is my father. This is my mother. Even prostitutes have parents, you know. Yes, they have, and even siblings. But Satan has stolen their lives. But in this work of prostitution, God chose to deliver Israel from a prostitute. So the life you're living, 
Don't think you have gone too far from naho, God. Naho, naho, Because kwa God can find you even where you are. The hand of God can still drag you from the pit. You have never reached too far. A place where the blood of Jesus cannot find you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 They brought Rahab and they took her to the camp and then they destroyed the whole of Jericho. Listen. Rahab comes. Jericho is destroyed. They lived in Israel. The, the title of that passage says <laughs> the topic of this sermon is clothed with a good reputation by dwelling among godly people. She sat with godly people me. and her family and everyone came to greet Rahab and say, you saved our spies. She was favored. Her family was favored. Israel has gained a foreigner, a Gentile, who comes to join them once they stepped in Canaan. They were very happy. Let's go back. In Matthew 1.5 there was a young man in the two in the young men soldiers from the, from the house from the house of Judah Matthew 1 5 up, up to 6 verse 27 and he was called Saul he was a Gentile he was a Gentile Salomon 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 eh the, the way they hugged Rahab, he saw a bride in Rahab. There were virgin Israelite maidens. Reuben had beautiful daughters. And in the family of Issachar, in the whole of Israel, by the way, they got the most beautiful girls in the house of Issachar. Do you remember Abishag of David? Abishag, whom they got from Shiloh. She was very beautiful in Israel. In the house of Issachar, Issachar had beautiful girls. But Salmon couldn't see any Israelite girl. But when he would notice how Rahab moved, <laughs> he got attracted to Rahab <laughs> and said, Look, <laughs> my heart has been taken <laughs> by this woman. And the mother would say, My son, what has happened? Mama. Mother? Our laws do not allow us to marry Gentiles, but I'm losing my mind over Rahab. Rahab was a town girl, a city girl. Others had lived in the wilderness. She killed, she would <laughs> She would come out with her handbag looking all nice and fresh and Salmon would lose his mind. And the mother said, my son, talk to your father. And he goes to his father and said, father, I cannot sleep. What happened to you, my son? This Gentile woman called Rahab, I am going to lose my mind. All right, my son. I think they went to see Joshua. The laws forbid us from marrying foreign women. Rahab has become one of us. Is she still foreign? And Joshua says, we will think about it. You know Rahab saved our lives. You can marry Rahab. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says Salmon 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 Boaz Kurinde Kurinahab Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab 
This is amazing. Boaz in our Yamzayend. Boaz. Obed Kurinde. Kuri Ruth. Be got obeyed by Ruth. These were Gentile women. Who were not married by just any Israelite, but sons of the house of Judah who had the promise of the Messiah. Let's carry on. Open the upside end. Obed begot Jesse. Yes, I. Yes, I am Zion. Jesse begot. Umami Daud. David the king. Nira Kurusa wa Daudi wa Ambere Haria Hejunind. Who was the grand grandmother of David? Rahab. Rahab. And who else? Narus. And Ruth. Isi Narjiza. Iyu Tura Nyanabazima. A good reputation. When you live with godly people, you need to change your friends and look for godly friends. Because Leave the friends who gossip, who slander your name. Look for godly friends who pray, who are full of the Spirit, and God will bless you with a good reputation. Amen. Amen. Let me show you something. This part of Matthew. Matthew 1. Matthew 1. Verse 1. For us to understand the miracles of God. Matthew 1 verse 1. What does the Bible say? Ama sekuru zayande. Ya Yesu Christo mwene nde. Dawidi wande. Wa Yesai. Yesai wande. Wa obedi. Obedi wande. Wa boazi. Boazi wande. Wa Salomon. Ya mzai kurinde. Mm-hmm. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham yabzaye Isaac. Isaac yabzaye Yakobo. Yakobo yabzaye Yuda na Benese. Unva kubaje kuri Yuda basiza band. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. But emphasis is on Judah. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. And Tamar was not an Israelite daughter. She was a Canaanite woman. Did you know that in the, in the blood and the genealogy of Jesus, it's not only with Jews or Hebrew blood, but there are also Gentiles. That's why Jesus does not only belong to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles, because he has our blood. And I need to tell you that the blood of the woman is heavier than the blood of the man, the father. Actually, intellectuals say Scientists have said, have proven that the intellect of a child comes from their mother. The intellectual. The intellectual side of children is given by their mother. So when you marry an intelligent woman, you will get intelligent children. I am not adding anything to that statement. We'll stop there. An intelligent woman will give you intelligent children. Okay. And that's it. I haven't (laughs) said anything else. My statement ends there. There. 
An intelligent woman will give birth to intelligent children. Full stop. <laughs> okay. Ramu yabzai. Oh. Peres yabzai hesron hesron yabzai ramu ramu yabzai minadaba minadaba yabzai nashon nashon yabzai Salomon Salomon yabzai Boaz kuri Rahabu Boaz yabzai Obed kuri Rus Obed yabzai Yesai Yesai yabzai Umngami Dawidi Dawidi na we yabzai ende Salomo kuri ende Muka Uria. Donc hari mo na na madesordre muri zizjenaloji. Nda shimi ma na kwatari atari ma na gusa yabanu bari kumurongo ni ma na yabanya kavuyu urumvi ma na yachu ma ni shimwe chare. Perez begot Hezron and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nashon and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of. Uriah. There's so much disorder in the genealogy of Jesus, and it makes me thank him for being the God of disorganized and messed up people, not just organized and perfect people. He's not the God of perfection, but the God of the weak. Amen. Amen. I'll close with Hebrews 11, 31. The, the chapter, yes, the, the chapter of Hebrews 11 is known as the hall of fame for the people of faith. When the Bible mentions people who are powerful in faith, let's, let's go there and read it. 11 and 31. Kwa tumyende maraya uwo rahabu atarimbura nwa na batumvi imana kuko yagize ati yakiranye abatasi amahoro haleluya amen by faith the harlot rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace mubo kwizera in the hall of fame of the faithful, the Bible calls out Abel first, Noah, and Noah, Abraham, and Abraham, Isaac, Isaac Jacob, Jacob, Moses, Moses Rahab. and Rahab is in that hall of fame. Isaiah had faith, right? Do we hear Isaiah in Hebrews 11? Elijah was a man of powerful faith. How do they not mention Elijah and they mention Rahab in Hebrews 11? When they talk about the heroes of faith, Rahab's name is mentioned. When we get to heaven, we will find a neighborhood of Rahab. By faith, Rahab's life was saved and she wasn't destroyed with those who did not obey God because she received the spies with peace. As I close this morning service, God is asking you for something. Change your friends, change your company. God is asking you to obey. God is asking you to have faith. If Rahab can have faith with all her habits, can you fail to have faith when you don't have the habits that Rahab had? So time has come for you that God may change your reputation. Let me ask that you stand and we pray. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. God is going to change your name, your reputation. He's going to put you in the list of those who have faith. And out of you will come great people. Rahab 
hosted the spies and she didn't know she would be the great grandmother of Jesus. So I'm encouraging you to do good works. I'm encouraging you to love God. I'm encouraging you to love God's people. I'm encouraging you to live in peace with people and leave the rest to God. The hub Rahab didn't know that she was being positioned in the genealogy of Jesus. You don't know where you're being positioned. But what I know, if you keep your faith, if you keep your hope, if you receive people with peace, if you don't show favoritism, something will happen to you. God, we thank you in this moment. We thank your power. Thank you for your authority. I am praying a blessing upon this whole congregation. What you did for Rahab, you can do it for us. What you did for Rahab, and she became a powerful woman, written in the Bible, and we preach about Rahab, and she was never named in the list of heroes of faith. And we know how to be your eyes. We know that you have names, you have written our names in the book of life. Change our reputation. Let us have a good reputation. Let us be a good fragrance to people. Let us say good words. Let's walk with people. Let's have good relationships with good people. Let's work with good people. Connect us to good people. Surround us with good people. Let us sit with good people. We are asking for this Jesus. The years we have left of our lives. Let us be with your people. People who know you, who fear you, who honor you. Lord, do this for us in the name of Jesus.